A straw is a prepared tube used to suck a beverage out of a container. This is Webster's definition of the drinking straw. If we didn't see straws being used every day, one might be left with a few questions given this understanding of the term. Was said beverage crafted within a receptacle in which mouth can't touch bottle? And if so, why? Are these tubes naturally occurring in such abundance that it would be fiscally irresponsible not to use them for their intended purpose? And most importantly, have we run out of social, political, and medical issues to the point at which R&D dollars are most effectively utilized to maximize sucking? <laughs> I'm, I'm using the plastic drinking straw as an example today, but the issues reach far beyond straws, single-use plastics, or the field of conservation. The straw can serve as a demonstrative byproduct of the developments we've seen in the last hundred years. The straw can display our endless capacity for technological innovation, be it necessary or not. And the straw can also serve as the litmus test for the human capacity to make change when and where needed. Before going much further, I can tell you three things that will summarize my talk today. I will give each of you a tangible way to change the world today in a simple, effective, and notable manner and a reason to do so. I will systematically demonstrate the power of one action or inaction. And I'll provide a definition for environmentalists that applies to each and every one of you. To understand the story of the straw, one must first grasp its history, production, utilization, disposal, and afterlife. In looking at the lifespan of the straw, its particles are extracted in Saudi Arabia. It's sent by shipping vessel to Virginia, by rail to San Jose, by truck here to San Diego, and finally floats to a small island in the North Pacific. This is a fairly common path for the consumer good, which is most often made up in part or whole of crude oil extracted in the Middle East, produced in an industrial manufacturing facility, shipped to a centralized distribution center, utilized locally, and finally discarded. So we see that the straw is well-traveled, and we have drastically oversimplified the production process. But what is important to keep in mind is that a small, simple, and seemingly innocuous product such as a straw represents a complex past, multifaceted use, and potentially detrimental future. So here's the second reminder that this presentation is about straws, but it's not really about straws, right? All right, on with the history of straws. Historians have found depictions of ancient Sumerians, Babylonians, and Egyptians all drinking from straws. Some time passes, 1888, Marvin Stone is sipping on a mint julep through natural ryegrass with some buddies and decidedly not enjoying himself. This displeasure led Marvin to patenting the spiral winding process to produce paper straws, an invention which serves various functions to date. More time passes, 1930, Joseph Friedman is sharing a milkshake with his daughter and notices her struggling as straws then came in one shape, straight, and she didn't reach the counter. Joseph invented the bendy straw, went on to start a straw company, and eventually replaced paper with plastic. This pretty much brings us up to speed in the world of straw production. There is no international authority on modern day straw use, but it is estimated that in the United States alone, we use over 500 million straws per day. Staggering as this may seem, 500 million would be met if each one of us used a little over one straw a day. Now think back at the last time you ate out. You got a straw with your water, you got a straw with your cocktail or soda, you got a straw with your refill. In one sitting alone, you've gone through two or three straws. That's twice the national daily average. 500 million straws per day. This is equal to some 3.5 billion straws per week. 15 billion straws per month, and 180 billion straws per year. This is in the United States alone. We can see that a small and simple product, when utilized hundreds of millions of times daily, represents a massive waste issue over time. To say that straws have an adverse effect on our economy is an understatement. 
A 2013 study by the Natural Resources and Defense Council estimates that California spends $428 million a year on litter abatement projects. The Ocean Conservancy's International Coastal Cleanup Day has found that straws are the seventh most found item on our beaches. Entanglement and ingestion are two of the biggest concerns today when it comes to our wildlife. And the environmental issues are pressing and persistent. The photo degradation of single-use plastics is leading to a complex leaching of toxins into our waterways and food systems. 500 million straws per day. This is a huge amount of waste, a literal mountain of waste. But could we reduce this waste by 50%? I think so. Could we reduce it by 75%? By 100%? I think so. And here's how. I told you that I would provide you a simple, effective, and notable way to change the world. It's as easy as saying no straw please next time you eat out and every time thereafter. But some people need straws. Most kids will knock over any drink you put in front of them. Well, in these instances, there are alternatives, such as metal, glass, and reusable plastic. Policy change and regulation. Miami has banned straws from beachside hotels and restaurants because of the single-use plastics that were ending up in their waterways. The straw very well may be the next issue to address after single-use plastic bag bans. An industry buy-in, working with the industry to make changes. This is where I'm working. Through a campaign called The Last Straw, we ask bars and restaurants to provide straws only upon request. It's simple. There's no infrastructure necessary, no investment. The training is as simple as asking your staff to give a straw to a customer that asked for it. And the benefits are various. Cost savings. You buy less straws, you save more money. Participating in a socially conscious action in a time in which consumers are more and more aware of corporate responsibility. The free promotion that comes from nonprofits, activists, and media sources. And ultimately, it's the right thing to do. To measure the impact of a campaign such as The Last Straw, we'll take the most conservative measure possible. The average restaurant sees about 100 people a day. Well, our studies indicate that 10 or so percent of people would ask for a straw if you don't give it to them automatically. But let's say that 50% would ask for one. You see 100 customers a day, 50% ask for it, you're diverting 50 straws a day, not so much. 50 straws a day is equal to some 350 a week, 1,500 a month, 18,000 a year. That's per establishment. In 2013, there were 980,000 restaurants in the United States. If 1% of restaurants gave straws only to customers that asked for them, we would see a diversion of 178 million single-use straws a year. If all restaurants in this country were to provide straws only to customers that ask for them, we're now talking about a diversion of 17.8 billion single-use plastic straws from our neighborhoods, landfills, and waterways. While it's impossible to assess the exact impact, if we can divert the use of billions of straws per year, millions of pounds of waste, without causing any harm to our quality of life, would that not be our responsibility to do so? The second point I said I would make, every action has a positive or negative reaction. The power of one. Every straw we don't use, the straw that's not potentially harming our wildlife, our environment, our health, our communities. But be it straws, education, public transportation, or water quality, it all comes down to the power of one. Every one person has the power to make a change in their life. Every one change has the power to impact further transformation. I told you that I would provide a definition for environmentalists that applies to each and every one of you. Regardless of your political, religious, or personal background, you each want to live in the cleanest, 
greenest, healthiest, and most vibrant communities possible, and you want the same for your children. There are many issues ahead of us, but we see positive traction daily. Most importantly, we can each start with one action. I want not to start with no straw, please. Thank you. <laughs>